Cultural motifs and practices do often develop in multiple places simultaneously or at different times without the need for there to be a connection between the communities that create them. However, there's something utterly mystifying about the way that Mesolithic, Neolithic and Bronze Age cultures all decided to build incredible megalithic structures and carve intricate artifacts without any apparent connection between one another. In this video, we're going to explore a few more of the similarities between different megalithic cultures that are so prevalent that it's hard to ignore the idea that some sort of relationship existed. I can see how different cultures might develop similar farming techniques independently, but I find it rather strange that something as monumental and difficult as building huge stone circles, temples and dolmens would just happen in different places randomly. It's a time-consuming, resource-exhausting activity. If the benefits outweighed the effort, for example, if they had certain beliefs that required this sort of practice, then I find it hard to accept that lots of communities in different regions and at different times all had these same beliefs. Maybe they were all descended from a common ancestor, maybe they communicated with, with one another in some way, maybe a Bronze Age culture inherited certain knowledge from a Neolithic community in a different region, maybe an elite group travelled between the different cultures explaining construction techniques to them. But what's for sure is the whole thing doesn't seem as random as it's supposed to be. Trilithon structures are very common in the ancient world. They're, these are where two stone orthostats, so vertical pillars carved out of separate but whole pieces of rock, are put into position and then have a huge horizontal stone slab placed across the top of them. They are often used as entrances to megalithic burial grounds and temples. The idea of this structural form developing independently in different regions isn't crazy. It's a stable and functional sort of arch. However, it would be a lot easier if the pillars were at least made up of smaller stones. Just one trilithon must have been hugely difficult to erect, hoisting a huge slab onto two other stones, all of which weighed tons. There are a few examples in Malta. The Hajar Im site is made up of three megalithic temples. Building work started on at around 3600 BCE. The main temple has a trilithon entrance to a corridor with apse going off from either side and a rear exit at the end of it. Um, Nidra, which is only about 500 meters from Hajar Im, has three temples. The lower temple has a trilithon entrance with pitted decorations on the stones and dates to the Gigantia phase as well. Tahagrat in Amjar is made up of two temples, the earliest of which also dates to 3600 BCE. A trilithon entrance leads through to a paved corridor with three apses leading off of it. Where trilithon entrances don't exist in the Maltese temples, it's simply because they haven't survived. From the layouts, it's still clear that they would have been in place in all of the temples originally. Stonehenge is a famous example of multiple trilithon structures that didn't serve the purpose of being entranceways. As far as I know, it's the only stone circle in the world to take this form. Other circles are made up of standing stones without horizontal slabs laid on top. The remains of the stone structure that we can see today date to around 2600 BCE, but the entire landscape was inhabited much earlier and traces of timber and earth and ritual monuments have been found. It's not known why the Stonehenge builders decided upon a unique trilithon style circle or how that related to previous timber structures. It's quite a mystery. Tordongams in Menorca dates to 1400 BC. This Talayotic megalithic complex is made up of circular enclosures, closures, T-shaped pillars and trilithon entrances. It's not known if it was a series of watchtowers, a town, or a temple, but the trilithon entranceways are unmistakable and very similar to those in the Maltese temples. There are thousands of dolmens in the world, um, I've mentioned that before, and they vary in form. The most basic structure looks very much like a trilithon, and in that it's made up of two or more giant orthostats holding up a horizontal slab. But there are other types of dolmens which are more like buildings. However, a lot of them do include a trilithon entranceway. The Hunnabedden in the Netherlands are megalithic graves made up of a series of trilithons which create a long structure, a sort of tunnel. 
The dolmen on Val de Cal Belaros in Spain is made up of a circular chamber with a megalithic wall which is accessed through a trilithon entrance and a long corridor. In France, the Cairn de Petit Moine at Ozan was built in the late 5th millennium BCE. A second cairn was then built with a passage dolmen and two other dolmens were built around a thousand years later. The whole complex has some interesting features, such as a horn-shaped menhir leaning against a wall, various geometric etchings, and the carving of a sun wheel. The huge trilithon entrance to the cairn may have been built later, but it's magnificent nonetheless. What I find interesting is the horizontal slab of the trilithon is far bigger and heavier than the two orthostats it rests on. This is often the case with single dolmens as well and is sometimes put forward as an argument for them not having been for burials, since it would have been difficult to fit a body underneath. However, they could have been used for cremations instead. Um, entranceways normally have vertical and horizontal slabs of equal size and weight, probably because they needed to be tall and wide enough for a person to walk through. The San Martin dolmen in the Basque region of Spain is made up of a trilithon style corridor. Only one of the roof slabs remains. It dates to the late Neolithic, and the polygonal shaped burial chamber is made up of megaliths and the whole thing continued to be used right through to the Bronze Age. There are around 800 megalithic graves in Sardinia, which were built by the Neuragic civilization in the Bronze Age and are known as the Giant's Tombs. This one has two trilithon structures uh, built into it. The Chianca Dolmen in the Puglia area of mainland Italy also dates to the Bronze Age. It's made up of vertical stones around a square burial chamber with an enormous slab resting horizontally on top. One of the sides opens out onto an uncovered corridor lined with smaller vertical stones. Skeletons, animal bones, stone knives and pottery sheds were found in the burial chamber. La Table de Monchamp is one of the Loch Maria K megaliths in France. It's a dolmen which is now housed in a cairn for its protection. The trilithon entrance leads to a decorated chamber, which is thought to have been, re which is thought to have been a, a reused slab from a broken menhir nearby. Um, the Loch Maria K megaliths all date to different times in the Neolithic, so the area was in use over a long period. The Newgrange Passageway Tomb in Ireland was built around 3200 BCE and is a fantastic, imposing, circular burial mound with a grand trilithon entrance and several chambers inside. It's surrounded by a white quartz wall, various decorated curbstones and a stone circle. Just above the trilithon entrance is a gap which lets in sun sunlight during the winter solstice and it's thought this alignment was on purpose. Spirals are a common motif in the ancient world, and they come in various forms. In France, close to Loch Mariake, the Gavrini passage tomb has lots of megalithic art on its interior. It was built in 3500 BCE, and several orthostats are covered in carved spirals. There were also various geometric and abstract shapes carved into the walls. Its decorated ceiling slab once belonged to a menhir that also provided the roofs for the Table des Marchands and the Ervingle tombs, also in the region. At Newgrange, this curbstone is decorated with both spirals and geometric shapes. This wall inside one of the chambers has a triscale motif comprising three spirals, something that became a common symbol in later Celtic culture. There are thousands of examples of prehistoric rock art in the UK and Ireland. A lot of these are known as cup and ring marks because of the shapes they make. They aren't always associated with megalithic monuments and it's not clear what their purpose was. But they may have been symbolic or have acted as boundary markers. There are also many examples for, of spirals. Here, here are a few. So, these two spirals are carved into a rock at Tybraden in Ireland inside a prehistoric chambered cairn. These three spirals are carved into a natural outcrop of rock at Ballyo Craig in Kilmartin Glen in Scotland. The area also has standing stones, other types of rock art and a few burial cairns. Also in Scotland, many carved stone balls called petrospheres have been found over the years. Some are plain and others are decorated. It's thought they date back to the Neolithic at the earliest, but some could be from the much later Iron Age. 
The one in the photograph is from Torrey in Aberdeenshire and is covered in spiral decorations. It's not known what the petrospheres were for. They might have been used as slingshots or for some other practical purpose. Alternatively, they could have played a symbolic role in a ritual. The Necropolis di Montessu in Sardinia is a pre neuragic megalithic site dating to the Neolithic period. It comprises many Domus de Janus burial tombs, some of which have decorations carved on the walls. Some of these also include spirals alongside geometric patterns. The Castro de Santa Tegra is a Galician fort of circular enclosures in Spain. It's much later than the other sites I'm discussing in this video since it's Iron Age, but it has numerous spiral engravings which show that this motif was popular for thousands of years. I've mentioned cartwrights in previous videos. They aren't megalithic structures, but they are ancient and mysterious. And in Malta, they could ha have been created by the temple people. The reason for discussing them in this video is that there are cartwrights in other countries as well. In Malta, there are hundreds of them, but the few examples in other places are very similar in appearance. Cartwrights are parallel grooves, either carved or worn into the bedrock. It's not known which. Some are deeper than others, some are straight, others are curved, some come in sets, others are individual, some are on flatland, others go up hills. The original purpose is unknown and they haven't been dated conclusively. One idea is that they were worn down by some form of ancient transport, but there are lots of reasons why this doesn't seem plausible. Firstly, there are no hoof marks in between the parallel groups um, of animals which have, would have pulled the vehicle along. Secondly, there are areas where the ruts drop at weird angles, which would have been impractical for any form of transport. Thirdly, although the ruts more or less all have a gauge of around 1.41 metres, they often cross each other or form part of chaotic sets, which would make for a confusing transport system. It's also been proposed that they were for irrigation or has something to do with quarries, but none of these ideas fully explain all of their characteristics. Let's look at a few examples of them. As I said, there are hundreds of Malta and Gozo. I haven't managed to see all of them, but I have visited and photographed many. I won't show them all here. They are on my website along with their GPS locations though. Here is one at Shemshir, which is close to seven Neolithic rock cut tombs, the possible remains of a temple and various other scattered megaliths. It's a very deeply carved, curving cartwright. There are quite a few in Syracuse, in Sicily. I've personally only visited the one at the top of the Roman amphitheatre, which looks more like those in Pompeii, so it was probably worn down by a cart, and so is an actual cart rut, rather than one of these tracks from the more ancient past that we are discussing. But there are several others to the north, which look very much like those in Malta. Here are a few photographs I found of them. There are a lot of cart ruts around the Necropolis di Su Crucifiso Manor in Sardinia. This one is very clearly cut and is interrupted by the Necropolis, which was made by a pre neuragic Neolithic culture. It then continues on the other side. Does this mean that it is earlier than the burial chamber, which destroyed part of the rut when it was being dug out? Or did the roof of the Necropolis collapse at some point, causing the rut to be partially destroyed? The area is heavily wooded, but you can see on Google Earth multiple interrupted cart ruts running several hundred metres in a northwest to southeast direction. I only read about this one in Scotland recently. Uh, since Scotland has such a rich prehistoric megalithic heritage, I really wonder if there are more examples and if they are contemporary with the Neolithic cultures that built the stone circles and ancient villages there. It might also be modern. Um, but it does seem very reminiscent of the ones in Malta. There were also references to cart ruts in the Phrygian Valley in Turkey, into Laxcala in Mexico, on the Azores in Portugal, on the Canary Islands in Spain, in France and in Switzerland, but it's hard to find photographs and GPS locations for these. So there's another three examples of similarities between prehistoric cultures. Huge trilithon structures built into temples, dolmens and various burial monuments spiral motifs carved into natural rocks and megalithic buildings, cart ruts which are innumerable in Malta and Gozo but also found on a lesser scale in several other countries. What do you make of it all? Let's chat in the comments, follow me on Instagram for more content 
and take a look at my website for more details on the sites I visited. <laughs>